Hello, I would like to talk about, for our lesson today, the Japanese art of weaving called kumihimo. Now, kumihimo is an ancient, like two, three, four hundred year old form of weaving, and it's really unique, but very simple. And there are all kinds of patterns you can do, so I'm going to teach you just one. You're going to start with the materials that you'll need is um, a square piece of cardboard. This is about a four and a half inch square. That's fine. The size is what's comfortable for you. You're going to need a pencil, a pair of scissors, and you're going to need seven lengths of yarn. Oh, about... 18 inches long each. Now you can do them in one color, you can do them in two colors, or you can do them all in multicolors. What you're going to get when we're finished, it can be turned into either like a bracelet or a bookmark or even a cat toy. Uh, what I'm working on today is going to be made from white and red yarn. And when it's finished, that's what it's going to look like. Now, if you choose to do a multicolored one, here's one still in the loom, but you can see the multicolors in it. So the choice is yours how you choose to do this. Now, to get the loom ready, you're going to take your square and turn it into an octagon by uh, marking the corners with a diagonal line. And you're going to try and do this evenly all the way around. You're just going to mark the corners and when that's finished it will look like that. And then you're going to take your scissors and cut those areas off. and you will get your octagon. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We just need eight sides. Okay, so there's our octagon. Then with your pencil, you're going to put a little short line down the middle of each of your sides toward the center. So let's go ahead and mark the center Get as close as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. There's my center. And what I'm going to do is put a little line going down toward it on the center of each of my sides. I'm just going to keep turning it to where I see the flat side in front of me and make a little line about in the center of each of the sides so that when you're finished you're going to have something that looks like that then we're going to take our scissors and cut those little lines only we just need little notches Just keep turning and cutting just a little bit because we just need a little notch to hook our yarn into. All right. Last step in making our loom is to create a hole in the middle. And the easiest way I know to do that and it may, you may need an adult to help you with this, is to take just a pencil, press it down in the middle, and push. Now if you're using yarn, uh, you'll need to push it all the way through. If you're doing like embroidery thread or something thinner, 
you'll need to just poke it a little bit through with a smaller hole. But because I'm doing yarn, I'm going to wiggle it back and forth and get my pencil to go all the way through like that and create a bit larger hole. Now, our next step is to take our yarn. Now, I've already pre-cut mine, so it'll be faster. And you want to put all the ends close together. And what we need to do is get these to go through the hole. Now, the easiest way I can tell you to do this is just twist to get it nice and tight like that. Hold it like that. Put it over your hole. Take your pencil and push it on through the center. And you're just going to push until you see it poking up on the back here. When you see it poking up, pull it through. And then make a knot. We need to have a knot in it. Now, we want to be able to use the most amount of yarn, so don't make your knot way down here and just waste all this yarn. We're going to scoot that knot up by loosening it up and pulling it toward the end of the yarn so that we use the most amount of our yarn and then tighten it a little. We're going to pull it through so that the knot is pushed up against what we call the back of our loom. Now the top of our loom has all our strands on it and you're going to separate each strand into one of the slits. Doesn't matter which order you put it in. Just put one in each one of the slits. Now you may remember that we did seven pieces of yarn, but there are eight slits. This is important because we need to have one empty one at all times. Now, when you're finished, it should look like, oh, an octopus minus one leg or a jellyfish. And this is how you're going to hold it. But you're not going to hold it up in the air. You're going to hold it in front of you like this. And what you're going to do is always, always, always keep the empty one pointed towards you. You're going to count up three strings to the right. One, two, three. Pick up number three. Pull it toward the empty one and put it in the slit. Then you're going to turn this clockwise. Put the empty slit in front of you. Count up one, two, three. Pick up the third one. Put it in the empty slit. Turn it clockwise, count one, two, three, pick up the third one, put it in the empty slit, and you're going to keep turning always to keep the empty slot in front of you, point it towards you, count one, two, three to the right, pick up the third one, put it in the empty slit, and keep turning clockwise. Pick up the empty, th the third one, put it in the empty slit, turn it so that the empty one's in front of you. One, two, three. And this is all there is to the weaving. Other than when you're ready, when you've done about 10 of these, you're going to notice it's getting a little bulky here in the middle where the hole is. And what you're going to want to do, let me do a few more of these. You don't want these super tight. So 
don't pull them super tight while you're doing this. And after you've done about 10 or so, you've got this little bit of bulk and twistiness in the middle. And you're going to reach under and grab your knot and give it a little tug. And you'll see these start sliding down in the middle. See how they're slowly going down. And then you're going to go back to putting the empty slit in front of you. Count up three. Turn, count up three, pick it up, put it in the empty. Turn, count up three, put it in the empty. And you're going to keep doing this. And about every 10 times you do this, you're going to give your knot a little bit of a tug. And after a little while, you're going to notice that your little tentacles are shrinking up, but the knot and the weaving is coming down the center. So after you've done this a bunch of times, you'll start seeing the pattern come out from the bottom. And after you've woven and woven and woven for about a half an hour or so, you're going to get a nice long piece coming down the center and your little tentacles have gotten very short. Now, when they get really short like this, they start getting a little frayed on the inches and it's time to stop and take it off. So you're just going to pull them out of your loom. And what you could make out of this is a bunch of different things. You can turn this into a bracelet by untying this knot and tying the two of them together, trimming the ends, and you've got a really pretty bracelet. Uh, this can turn into a bookmark or a cat toy, which I think I'm going to turn mine into a cat toy. So I'm just going to put a knot on this end too. Slide it down. Pull it tight, trim the ends so that they're all nice and even. And there, now I've got another little cat toy. When you have two cats, you can't have enough toys. Okay, so if you need to pause the video or go back and replay it to catch all the steps again, but have fun with it. It's fast and easy, and it doesn't take a lot of tools or things to work with. Hope you enjoyed it today. I'll be back next week with another lesson. Have a great week.